Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we, oh, we built ourselves the Game Cleaner and it was about time too. Anything that falls off the edges of our map is now cleaned up and that's great, that's great. We don't want any stray objects falling in space forever. In today's episode, I'm going to take a look at something called the Area Effector. Now before we actually start, I'm going to say I'm sorry right now, there's some construction going on outside of my window, and they're making a lot of banging and booming noises, so if you can hear it, I'm really, really sorry. But the show must go on. So, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Area Effector. And the Area Effector is basically a 2D physics component uh, that will apply a force in a specific direction uh, to objects that enter into a specific area. All right. So let's get started. Now in the game that I built previously, the one that we're using as an example here, um, I used the area effector to create uh, a sort of jump boost. Um, it was an area that if the, it was a plant, and if the character runs across it, uh, then they are forced poof up into the air. And it gives them kind of this jump boost, some, some, a different height than they could reach uh, previously. So you can use the area effector for something like that. The area effector has a lot of different uses. Uh, it could be used for things like jump boost or speed boosts or, or, or elevators or, or anything like that that you can think of you know something that only affects uh, like puzzles that only affect certain things so let's say let's say I wanted to set it up so that uh, any any evil guy or a mob or whatever that enters a certain area is immediately blown off the edge of the map I can set up weapons or traps or anything like that that I really wanted to uh, and it's really rather easy to use I've gone through and I've built a couple of uh, pre-made objects, so we're not going to go over it again. Uh, I built myself a new material that I'm calling Puff Plant Particle, and I built myself a something I called Puff Plant Particles over here, a particle system. All right, and this is more about gameplay than anything else. I just built this particle system so that the player would be able to look at that and say, "Okay, something is going on there. This is not one of my regular enemies. It looks different than everything else." I'm not going to break this up into, into multiple episodes, into creating a new new object and the area effector itself. It doesn't really make sense to do. Uh, there's no code. There's no code in this at all. So uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to reuse uh, several of our existing objects, or at least one of our existing objects, in order to create this this plant that uh, that I created in my game as well. What I want you guys to do is find. If you've been following along, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, find yourself your cannon plant. And in the cannon plant, what I like about this cannon plant, it already has the leaves set up properly, and uh, the leaves already have their animation and everything on them. I could go through and I could actually, you know, uh, go through and make prefabs of each of the leaves and that kind of thing, and then add those leaves and make myself a new object. But rather than do that, this is already set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cannon plant, I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to say duplicate. Boom. All right. And when I do so, I'm just going to drag it way over to here, which is where I'm going to actually build this puff plant. All right. Now, I don't want to use everything that's actually on here. I don't want to use everything that's on here. The original cannon plant obviously shoots spores, etc., and we don't want to do that, right? Uh, so let's get rid of all the things we don't need. Let's open it up. We don't need the cannon. We don't need you, cannon. Yes, continue. I don't want you. Uh, we don't need our canvas. Uh, this is going to be an object that is part of the part of the scenery and can't be destroyed. I don't want this object to be destroyed. If you wanted to, if you wanted to make this a, a different kind of enemy or whatever, you could leave all this stuff if you decided. Um, the cannon tip, I don't need it because I'm no longer shooting a spore. Uh, let's go in here and take a look. The I think I'm just going to delete everything out of here. We don't need to shoot a spore. Uh, remove the component. Uh, I'll maybe put an audio later on. I'm not going to worry about it right now. This probably should make some kind of noise, you know, some kind of noise to indicate that something's going on here. And I'm going to get rid of this box collider for now. Uh, we're going to add that back actually, but for now I just want to start off with a clean object. And I'm going to rename my cannon plant. Let's rename it to Puff. Oops, Puff Plant. Puff Plant. And I'm going to find my particle system right here and I'm just going to drag it and drop it on a puff plant so it's it's in the same hierarchy. Uh, this is going to be the object that I actually want to use uh, to... Th this is going to be one contained object that I'm going to make a prefab out of later. So I've got the puff plant here uh, and basically what I want to do is I want to add a number of things so that if the character walks within a certain distance of this plant they are affected by uh, uh, forces. All right, And that's what the area effector does. So. Right here on the top level in Puff Plant, I think I'm going to say Add Component, 
Physics 2D, I'm going to go down and look for the area effector. You can see, once again, there's a number of different effectors that we could have used. A platform effector, a point effector, an area effector, this constant force. There's a lot of different things, surface effector, a lot of different things that we could actually use. Uh, and I'm going to just look at this one, just at the area effector for now. Maybe in future series, we will take a look at some of the other ones that are here. Uh, if I if I actually use uh, them in the game that I'm demonstrating, I will I will try and use them actually in the game that I'm, them, I am demonstrating in order to be able to show you what they are. But for now, we're only going to take a look at the area effector. So boom, I'm going to add it. Now the first thing you see when I add it, uh oh, there's a problem. Th this effector will not function until there's at least one enabled 2D collider. Great, let's do that. Add physics 2D box collider, and when I do so. It still didn't go away yet, and that's because it has to be used by effector, the used by effector option, which is right down here. We looked at this previously, but we skipped it over. We skipped over it and said, you know, I told you, you guys ignore used by effector, and we'll take a look at it later on. And this is what we're using it for right now. So boom, click it. Great, used by effector, our first error went away, but now we've got ourselves a second error. And this one here should be relatively obvious to you. Uh, the problem that we want, what we want to happen is if a character, if the character walks along here and enters into a specific area, uh, then they're going to be hit by these forces. We already know that if we have a collider and it's not a trigger, then the character can't pass it. It's basically a, an impassable wall. All right, so we know this has to be a trigger. All right, so far so good. We've gotten rid of all of our initial errors. All right, and what I want to do, this collider itself is basically the area in which it'll, the character will be affected. All right, so I'm going to increase the size and the Y for sure. Let's make it a little taller, maybe about this tall, and a little wider. It's going to be as wide as my plant. And let's raise it up beep, uh, to right about there. So now any, it's, and, and any collider that comes in here, anything, any object that comes in here, any rigid body that comes in here, is immediately going to be affected if they walk within this particular zone. All right. So far, so good. And in fact, that's all we need to really do in order to build, in order to build this new puff plant. That's all we really need to do. So now let's take a look at the actual area effector itself. The area effector right here, the first component we added, is relatively simplistic, to be honest. There's only a handful of different options in order for this to occur. Now we, we've already we've already set this up once. We've already done this once. We've already had this happen once. We did it all through code. If I hit play right here for a second here. Uh, I have maximize on play off. Let's just turn it on for a second. Maximize on play, play. Um, we already did this once, right? We already set it up so that if you jump on this this rock, uh, you are having a force push you away. And we did it all through code. And some of you might be thinking like, well, why didn't you just do it through code again? Uh, the area effector doesn't require any code, which is awesome. Uh, and the reason why I did originally I did it with code was because the the rock or the bore or the spikes uh, apply force differently. Um, the area effector will apply a constant force as long as the object is located within the area of effect. After that, the force stops being applied, and uh, and the character begins to fall through gravity again. The same thing is true here. All right, but the difference with the area effector is every time the character falls back into the area that's you know the the trigger area, the force is once again applied. We didn't do that with our enemies, right? Our enemies, if we jump on top of the if we jump on top of the rock, for example, uh, it might apply a force every half second. Uh, if we jump on top of the spikes, maybe it applies a force every three seconds. So the character could run across a specific zone if they wanted to. I could have a number of these things here, or a really large one in place, and the character would only be affected once. With the area effector, they are constantly being affected as long as they are within the trigger zone. All right, so that's something to consider. That's why I actually did it with code and not with the area effector on the enemies. With the area effector, though, we've got a number of things we can do. First of all, the collider mask. What is being affected? You know, you can go in here and you can say, well, I only want specific objects to be affected. Maybe I only want shootable objects. So only the enemies uh, are going to be affected. If an enemy goes inside of this thing here, they're going to be blown away. Now, I don't want that. I'm going to leave it as everything for now. Uh, so if a player walks in, if, an, if a boar walks in, or if one of the spores fly in here, whatever happens, they're going to be shot away. All right? Uh, so I'm going to leave the collider mask to everything, but you guys, depending on your use of this object, uh, might want to change that to only affect very specific things. 
Directly below that is force direction, and the force direction uh, the force direction will is, is the direction in which the force is applied. Obviously, it seems pretty evident. The interesting thing about force direction, however, is that it is not it is global. Uh, it's it's global coordinates. It's world coordinates. It's not based on the transform of the object at all. So if I rotate uh, my 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 game object, it doesn't affect the direction in which the force is applied. It's going to be applied always in the direction, the world space coordinate direction. All right, zero, a force direction of zero, uh, means it's applying a force to the right. A force direction of, let's say, 90, means it's applying a force directly upwards. Uh, 180 is applying directly left, and uh, 270 is applying a force directly down. Uh, I think you can go up to a maximum of 359.9999 or whatever, uh, and that's kind of a hard edge. It doesn't go past that, so you can't like put like 720 or anything like that in here. Uh, obviously, you can do anything in between too, like I could put a 94 or whatever direction I want the force to actually operate in is my force direction. The force magnitude, and I don't really know what number I want in here, let's say I want to uh, I don't know, 40. We're going to check that out in a minute. The force magnitude is obviously the amount of force that's being applied to, to the object that walks into here. Uh, and like I said, that force is applied over time through, while, while, it's being, while it's remaining within this trigger area. All right. Force variation, obviously, exactly as the name applies, or the name sounds, it's going to allow your force to vary. We've got drag and we've got angular drag in here. And basically, drag will slow an object down over time. Uh, it's like you know, like friction or anything else, you know, air friction or anything else is going to slow you down over time. Angular drag will slow down your rotation, uh, and interestingly, this applies to the object that's coming in, um, in addition to. Uh, the object itself. So if you have a rigid body on the object that's coming in, you have the drag and angular drag options available as well. Let's see if I can... Where's my character? Where's my character? Uh, character. So the character's rigid body obviously has uh, angular drag and linear drag right here. So it's on top of that. Alright, puff plant. Uh, and lastly, force target. Now you have a couple of options on here. You have the rigid body and you have the collider itself. Uh, or, or sorry, or a collider. If you are applying a force to a rigid body that enters, uh, then the force is applied to the center of mass of the rigid body and that will prevent any type of rotation. Uh, from occurring on the object. It applies it evenly to the center of mass, so it, the object will not rotate. However, if you're applying it to a collider, that's not true. By applying a force to the collider instead of the rigid body, uh, you may get an angular velocity. You may get some kind of rotation occurring within your object. Okay, and that's of course when angular drag will will have an effect on the on the amount of rotation and how long it rotates for. Uh, so you guys want to be aware of that. I'm going to leave it as rigid body. I just want the character to be shot in the air. I don't want any kind of rotation or anything weird like that to happen. All right, that's all you need to do. This brand spanking new character required absolutely no code, uh, and it works. It works like an elevator basically. It works like a jump boost. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to leave. Uh, let's leave maximize on play on just so you can see it. Uh, let's run over there. Watch out for those things. Run across my awesome rope bridge, and there we go. Watch what happens when I run inside. Boom! Automatically having it applied. And the interesting thing is, because of the way we set up our animation, uh, the jump and everything automatically occurs. So something like this, you still have control over your character. You can still move around like that. I can still move around so I can jump farther. Uh, you could set it up so that's happening instead, or you maybe have spikes up top that, that affect the character and, and prevent him from, uh, you know, and he takes damage when he gets up there. Who knows? Um, there's a lot of different things that you guys could do with this. All right, so that's the area effector. It's relatively simplistic to use. I hope you guys will take it and use it for something awesome. If you're building a racing game, a speed boost here, or even a game like this, maybe your character has a run speed boost so he helps him get away from things and they're chasing him, or, or who knows what you could use it for. All right, it's up to you guys. The imagination is the limit. So use your imagination, guys. I really hope that you're taking these lessons and you're not just simply applying what I've taught you. Of course, I want you to follow along so you understand the concepts. But take it farther, guys. Take it farther. That's the whole point of these. I'm teaching you something. Take it farther than that. Add something to it. Make it your own. All right? I'm really looking forward to seeing the games you guys are making. We are coming down to the end. We've got only a handful more episodes, I think. Not very many more episodes at all. And then I think we're going to be done. And after that, I'll move on to a new series, a, a new type of game. Maybe if you've got a game idea in mind uh, or a game genre in mind, let me know. 
uh, I can start looking at that as well. I'm going to do uh, the course that's my required, like I'm going to do a series that's required by the courses I'm teaching at school, which means I'm going to be moving on to 3D. Uh, but after that, guys, if you have a game, you say, you know, I'd really like to see how you make this kind of game, let me know in the comments, and maybe we can take a look at that all together. All right, so I'm really looking forward to your stuff. Ah, oh, protection alert, that shouldn't have showed up. Goodbye, Chrome. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. That lets me know what you like and what you don't like, all right? It helps me change. It helps me teach you better. That's the point of this. I'm teaching you guys. I'm showing you guys. It's not for me. I know how to do all this stuff already, all right? So let me know down in the comments. Thumbs down if you have to. Let me know why in the comments, all right, guys? Thumbs up. Thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.